I cannot see a problem with everything that I give it. I honestly do not believe she's put all this weight on just through what she eats. She's eating adults portions and her mom don't know that. She's eating around two or three times more than what she need. Today you are watching junk food kids. Let's learn from their mistakes in addressing childhood obesity. Thyroid. Thyroid, so, so it might be something to do with that. Thyroid problems are a condition that affect the thyroid gland that regulate the body's metabolism. And in some cases, it can lead to slow metabolism and may cause weight gain. I gotta get him something to eat quickly, just for while we're going around so they don't whinge and moan at me. Yeah, you're getting one of those. I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. We're getting apple juice to share. This apple juice is 210 calories, and if they're sharing that, it will be 105 calories per each. I like to just have an easy life. I think everybody likes an easy life. No, you're not, no. Sorry, come on. Sometimes I think to myself, no, I shouldn't give in. You're not having Kinder Eggs. But I do. Go and get a Kinder Egg each, quickly. Now we have an extra 110 calories because they the Kinder Egg. A child at this age should eat around 1,200 calories, so she just ate 43% of her daily budget. Her mum Natalie is trying to improve her diet, but Tallulah's got a mind of her own. The other morning I came in and there was chocolate milkshake powder all over, all around her face, in my kettle, where she tried to make these chocolate milkshakes. All little girls' clothes that are in her section are all Princess Sophia and Peppa Pig. You know, little characters like that that she loves, but she's too big for them. She can't wear them. And it absolutely breaks my heart. Honestly, it does, it breaks my heart. But what can I do? I do try. And this is why it's so important not to judge people, you know. No one wants that their child will be in this place. And you don't know what this person went through, what they're trying, what they're doing, what happened to them in the past, which kind of trauma they face with. She's put on four and a half stone this last year. I don't know how she's put it on. Because eight times out of 10, she's eating the same food as me. So probably the problem is the portion size. Pavia doesn't seem to have an off button. She does always seem to be hungry. It's not necessarily a physical hunger. Many times people are eating for emotional reasons. The problem is that the person can tell the difference. And this is why it's so, so important to teach kids listen to their body cues from a young age. At 19 stone, Pavia's case is serious. So she's being seen by Dr. Mushtak, who runs the clinic. Do you know why you're here, Pavia? Not really. Um, you might have a little clue. She's shut down and she's really uncomfortable about this situation. And I'm pretty sure that it's not the first time that she's hearing those things. Distracting with that phone. Can you just put the phone away, please? I'm not wasting any more time with this. Thank you. And this is why I think that it's not necessarily to get the kids involved in this talk. The weight is still continuing to go up rapidly. I think the first step is always to keep the weight the same. Great advice. But the problem that many times they don't explain how to do that and what simply happened in the next checkup, they just realizing that the child gained another 20, 30 or 40 pounds. Now, regular weight check can be a game changer to make sure that you're in the right direction. But you need to be careful with that and to make sure that you're using that in the right way if you don't want to make more ham than good. I made a video about that in the past. You can check it out in the description below. When I've tried to talk to her about the health risks of her weight, her response is, don't be daft, I'll be fine. I think Pavia thinks she's invincible. It's because her brain is not fully developed yet. Kids at this age, 
don't think rationally like adults. They don't think about the future. They don't think about the consequences. She'll just nag on about how my weight worries her. I'm like, yeah, okay, you don't need to keep saying it every four seconds of my life. So it's come to the point that she's seeing her mom as the enemy, which means it will be very challenging for her mother to help her as long as her daughter seeing her at this way. At this stage, the best thing that her mother can do is to rebuild her relationship with her. Near Leeds, Claire's meeting Paul Gately, an expert on obesity in children from outside the NHS. Hi, Paul. I'm good, thanks. Paul, nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. Just goes. So your mum said to help you with your weight, do you think you need any help? No. Well. I wasn't a very convincing no. Well, how do you make a no more convincing? If the child is not on board and they're not asking for help, it won't help if you'll keep pushing for this direction over and over again. It's just going to make the child feel worse about themselves and to make them shut down even more. It will be much better idea to approach that as a family as the parents will get the guidance and the support that they need to help their kids. Is it okay if I chat to your mum about it? You can, but I don't want to talk to her about it. I don't believe a teenager when they say to me they don't care about their weight. Can I go now? You can. Do you want any fruit or anything? No, fruit is overrated. They're scared to, to let themselves be more open to people because they don't trust people around them. I agree, but why they didn't do it in first place? If they know that their daughter is not on board and she's feeling so uncomfortable about that. I'm actually not bothered about the food. I think she's really lost. Okay. And, and the first step of overcoming that being lost is putting a lot of boundaries in place. It's not necessarily about boundaries. It's more about changing the family lifestyle and to make a general rules to the whole family so they won't single out just one child. This is not going to be an easy job. The chances of her changing her weight trajectory are really low. Okay. 90% of kids who become obese don't change that. That's almost like saying she's got no hope. Yeah, but they didn't take into account the parents that willing to do whatever is needed and willing to make the changes and to put the effort to make it work. I'm pretty sure it will be a different statistic if they will check just those families who are willing to go all in. That's the reality of most circumstances for teenagers. I don't want you eating in your room anymore. Just not acceptable. Well, maybe I don't want to start sitting at the table just because somebody said I have to. It's not about that they've said that you have to. Pretty it's much about, is, isn't it? It's about establishing some boundaries. It's about establishing proper patterns in order for you to get yourself sorted. It will be much more effective if she will approach that as a family change. She can say something like, you know, I want to hear from you more. I want to hear how was your day and how was it school. So I really want it will start making a family meals together every day. You know, at the moment that you're doing that in this way, the child don't feel under attack and it will be much easier to get them on board. At the end of the day, she is the child and I'm the adult. I'm responsible in that. Can I change things? I'm certainly willing to give it my best shot and hopefully I'll be able to change things. It's really important to never lose hope and it's never too late as long as the parent didn't give up. Now check out this video, I'm sure you'll like it.